And here we go. We do a forward dive, getting a nice forward stretch. Placing our hands down, we walk out into a plank position. We call this an inchworm while we step our feet towards our hands, stacking our, the weight of our hips directly over our heels, and we roll up. Diving forward, pulling belly button to spine. We walk out, try not to extend the neck too far out of alignment. Walking in, and we curl up, stacking vertebrae. Turning around again, we're just making some distance on the mat. Forward dive, big stretch. This is about length here. Walking out here, find our nice solid plank, and we move into some knee drivers. We have the same knee, moving to the same elbow, finding length through the crown of the head, looking directly down at the mat, using lower abs to pull that knee in. And then we add a twist, getting into obliques. Opposite knee drives to the opposite elbow in high plank. Staying lifted through the abdominals so you're not sagging through the waist. And then we press up into down dog. And we walk the dog to get a little bit of stretch through the back of those legs, shoulders, and again lengthening through the spine. We roll through the vertebrae into our plank, pressing back again into downward dog and rolling back into plank. As we press, we lean into those heels, getting stretched through back of the legs, and we lower our knees from our plank. So we hold the plank position. Try not to let the bottom lift or sag. Knees are doing the lowering while upper body stays in as much alignment squared off as possible without with very minimal dipping of the hips and we move into quadruped we take our right leg we lengthen it out hands are narrow elbows come into sides we try set lean into those triceps while we go into some seesaw push-ups noticing the length through the spine throughout this move Neck is neutral, so there's no picking up or over tucking of the chin. Those elbows drive into the sides. We're loading into the triceps, staying lifted through the core. Now we widen the stance of our hands, lifting the other leg, keeping hips squared. We go again into a seesaw push up with these arms wide, elbows go out. Now we can feel the pressing through the hands, activating our chest muscles. Lowering down, keeping that alignment, keeping that neutral spine. Staying lifted, belly button to spine. And we press back into child's pose, release. We roll up to the top, find some height. And we take one leg back, arm goes down again. In this three-point position, right leg goes out. I square the hips. I go into some single leg circles, pressing through hands, activating chest, neutral spine. The smaller the circles, here we go, we go in reverse. The smaller the circles, the more control we're trying to keep. There from being any excessive movement through the hips, we're trying to just keep that leg circling around. And we go into a bent, flexing foot, towards the bum and then lengthening out long through pointed toe. We flex and lengthen, keeping back in alignment, pressing through hands, chest is active. Lowering leg, keeping that neutral spine, leg now goes out long, make sure those hips stay squared. And we start our circling of that leg Finding that control there in the pelvis. So try not to let rib cage move around too much. And we reverse direction of our circles, continuing with your breath in through the nose, out through the mouth, looking down at the mat without a chin tuck. We flex and point, flex and point, leaving that knee lifted. Notice the knee is not lowering. The entire leg stays lifted, transitioning through flex and point. Lots of length through that pointed toe, trying to grow longer through that leg out of that hip. We lower down and we transition onto our bottoms. 
we're gonna put our arms forward, shoulders stay down, we sit back towards our C-curved spine. We go with the twist from the waist. So the center of our chest is aiming towards the space between our fingertips. So the rotation of the upper body is happening along that spinal column. Keeping neck in a very slight tuck, only so that we can keep our head in a neutral spine. It's not falling behind us, we're not lifting chin. Let's come on up, take a little rest. Arms go out again, shoulders down, tucking the pelvis, we roll back into our C curve. We rotate to the right and we lift right arm while upper body lifts up, focusing on shoulder out of the ear, staying rotated to the side, only lifting the arm up if you're able to, if not leaving arms forward and coming slightly up through that pulse. Beautiful movement, arm is long, shoulders stay down. We go into the other side, inhale and exhale, in and out. Belly button continues to pull to spine, staying back into C curve. Both feet are anchored down onto the mat while we pulse up to lift and lower back into controlled C curve. Excellent, we come back through center and we slowly roll down all the way to the mat one vertebrae at a time. Here we go. We lift our legs up. Both legs point to the ceiling, getting your legs as straight as you can. Upper body lifts. Head is supported through fingertips. We scissor the legs. As we scissor those legs, we're thinking about lengthening through point to toe, almost getting relief out of that hip socket. And then we V, open at the legs. So we're not allowing our legs to fall. We are intentionally opening those legs with length and drawing them back together through those inner thighs. Growing longer, staying lifted, back stays an imprint. And then with legs together, toes are pointed. You could be in Pilates stance with a slight turnout of the feet. We lower down to diagonal, pulling back up. As those legs are lowering down, making sure that the back does not come up off of the mat. Trying to stay in an imprinted spine for full support. If you feel your back picking up, then don't lower your legs down quite as low. Going in through a tabletop position, you can lower the upper body through this move. Heels come together, toes turn out. Going back to that diagonal move, I lengthen through inner thighs all the way straight. And then as I pull my heels in, my knees are wide and these are some frog extensions. Lengthening, zipping through inner thighs while the legs go long, feet are flexed. And then crunching those knees back towards the chest. And then we go here into our tabletop position. We lower right toe down, left toe down. So this is an opening of the hip. So we're noticing that the space behind our kneecap stays uniform. So we're not bending excessively through the knee in order for the toe to reach. We're actually opening up through that hip, allowing the toe to drop. And then we draw knees together and we bring our knees to each side. Again, lots of engagement through the inner part of the legs, in through thighs, pressing through knees, pressing through calves, drawing knees down. Here we add an extended leg. We bend, we go to the side, we extend long, lifting taller through center. We alternate the sides. Growing longer every time you extend through those legs, lifting to sky. Go ahead and rest. Taking hands on kneecaps, go ahead and circle those knees away from each other one direction, and then we can reverse the other direction. It's just a nice little stretch. Excellent. So 
we take our feet down onto the mat. So we find our placement here, feet are hip distance apart, parallel to one another. Hip distance apart. We find our neutral spine. Neutral spine is that natural curve in the spine, and then we press our belly button to spine, flattening out the back to get into an imprint. We go ahead and find weight through the feet, and we articulate up, curling up into our bridge, and lowering down. So we lift up again, articulating up, articulating down, lots of control. This next time we're gonna come up, we'll be staying up in our bridge. Hips are lifted and we go into a march. Trying to stay lifted through the hips, minimizing any movement there through the pelvis. We wanna lift and march. Trying not to sink at the hips through the transition through the other foot. And from here, we can lift our arms while we go from toe up onto our toes, down to heels. Stay lifted through those hips. We lift our hips, we lower our hips. Arms go to the, to the ceiling. Trying to keep anchored there through the shoulders. However, chest remains soft while we lift. Staying at the top, we now open our knees and close them with control. As you open your knees, there may be a slight tendency to lower those hips. As knees come back together, continue to lift those hips up. We then come down, lifting up. We have right leg and left arm. So opposites working here. As the leg goes long, arm goes long overhead. As knee drives into tabletop, arm meets back to the center. Keeping hips lifted, we transition weight to the other arm and leg. So again, we have opposites working here, growing longer through the arm, growing longer through the leg, lots of extension and length here while staying lifted and stabilized through the pelvis. Going back to our return, slowly articulating down and pull those knees into the chest. Enjoy that rest. And we can roll up to the top. So rolling many times as you need here. Just take your time getting up, rolling like a ball. Then once we make it to the top, holding balance on sits bones, posturing, releasing the hands, holding balance. Lifting both arms, keeping shoulders down. And taking an inhale. Go into a rotation of the trunk, upper body. Rotates from side to side. So opening the arm out long to the side on that rotation. And then we're gonna go ahead and go into some extension moves. Arms go long overhead, anchoring in through pubic bone, externally rotating legs. We lift upper body. Remember, this is about length and not height. So keeping the head nice and long through the spine without an excessive lift through the chin. We go from a Y of the arms, pulling elbows in into a W. Pulling those scapular bones back towards each other and extending long on the return overhead. Trying not to change the lift. We go pulling elbows back and lengthen. And we rest, good job. Well done, push back into child's pose. You can release that lower back as we transition onto our side for side lying legs. We go on to our 
forearm, elbow directly under shoulder, and we start to clam our legs. So knees come apart, toes stay together. Top arm is behind ear to increase the instability and balance component. Pulling belly button into spine, stabilizing there through the pelvis. And here we add on. We clam open with the legs and we go into an extended leg straight. Toes come together and we go back again into our extension. Big lift through the upper body, length through the spine again. Collarbone is wide, abdominals and core engaged. Bottom leg goes long, extending. We lift and lower with some pulses. Getting into that inner thigh while we lift and lower again, growing longer through that leg, longer through that toe. And we've added on here. We pull the knee in and lengthen that leg out long, minimizing any movement through that upper body and pelvis. Big stability here. Excellent. And next we transition into our side plank. On our side, again, everything's lined up under that bottom shoulder. We lift the hips and lower. Looking down towards the mat takes a little bit of the pressure there off of that neck. Holding up, and we come on down for a little bit of stretching. We go into our mermaid sit. Arms go into a T reaching away from the front leg, anchoring down through that opposite hip, chest stays open, reaching overhead. Back into a T, we go the other direction. We go for that reach first, anchoring in through that hip, facing forward, taking an inhale. Exhale, here we can pick up our hip and we rotate. Upper body, chest anchors down in the direction of the mat. We open up again, plug in through that hip, and we lift up to T. Good job. Okay, we're going to go on over into the other side, lining up elbow underneath shoulder, bringing toes together, and we clam for the legs. We open knees apart and close back down. Again, upper arm is behind head, still collarbone wide. Staying lifted through the hips, I'm sorry, lifted through the ribs. And then we go into our extension, so we lengthen that leg, toes come together. Growing longer out of that hip joint, lengthening through toe, lots of stretch through the back of that leg. Pelvis stays anchored, no movement, lower abs control. Excellent. And then we have our top leg goes behind us, lifting straightened bottom leg, inner thighs doing the lifting while we stabilize through the abdominals. And then we pull in the knee and we extend long. Growing nice and long through that bottom leg. Top leg is anchored, foot is floored. Pelvis is stable, no movement at the hips. Continuing the movement. And then we lift on up to our side plank. Again, we have elbow directly under shoulder. Top arm can go to the ceiling as we lift and lower our hips. Neck is long, crown of the head's pulling along, lengthening through spine. Again, you can always look down towards the mat if you feel any pain in that neck. Go ahead and lower down. And we go again into our mermaid stretching. Now we have the other leg in front. Arms go to T. We move away from front leg, anchoring in through that opposite hip. Inhale and exhale. Grounding through sits bones and hips, coming back through T. And going towards that front leg, hand goes down first. We plug in that hip down while we reach facing forward. Nice stretch through the side and the hip. Here we can pick up that hip slightly while we rotate chest to mat. Still growing long through that arm, but keeping shoulder out of ear, breathing. 
twisting back to front, re-plugging in the hip. We go to T. Our last move, we cross our legs. Taking an inhale, we exhale, rolling down one vertebrae at a time into a forward fold. Breathing into the move, we're going to walk our hands to one side, getting a side stretch. We come back through center. Good job, rolling up one vertebrae at a time. Let's cross our legs the other direction. Now this side might feel a little bit more unnatural. But good to work on that symmetry and we roll down one vertebrae at a time again into forward fold reaching to the side getting into a nice side stretch keeping both sits bones anchored down onto the mat again try not to let there be any pickup and we come back to the center take an inhale on your exhale we're going to stack that spine all the way to the top and you've completed your workout Thanks for joining me. Take care.